So tonight we're focusing on brushes. And this is always a big topic for people, big questions. And, and it's funny, we've done so many webinars on brushes. And yet I promise like a week from now, somebody's going to say, I wish y'all had a class on brushes. <laughs> and luckily we do record these and they can go back and, and watch them. But I know that people like to watch live so they can ask questions. And I'll try and go through and go slowly um, and repeat doing the same things over and over um, so that you'll... Um, have that repetition that's so helpful. Okay. So first I want to explain local versus global. All right. So if I make a change in the basic panel or any of these panels on the left hand side, by the way, if you happen to not be seeing one of these, that does that can happen by accident. However, you know, your child clicking around, you clicking by accident. If you're not seeing one of these, right click on one that you do see and then check the one that's missing. So here I unchecked split tone, so split toning went away. I'm gonna right click somewhere and see the one that's not checked and I'm gonna check it. All right, so if I use one of these, it's gonna apply it over the entire image. So let's say <clears throat> I brighten. It brightens the whole image, doesn't it? Not just a specific small area. If I want to add a lot of clarity, say just to this headdress area, I bump up the clarity. It doesn't just do it on the little crown of flowers, it does it over the entire image, which isn't necessarily a good thing. We don't really want that. It doesn't, it's not beneficial to her skin and, and, um, and the rest of the image to have it the, the clarity up that high. Let's say that we want to tweak say the yellows and the flowers. Well, uh, let's do saturation here. And we really saturate. Well, it's not gonna saturate just that area. It's gonna do all the yellows in the image. Or if we wanna do like oranges, well, it does all of it, including her skin, which doesn't look great, does it? So what we need to do is at times localize the changes. And these are global meaning over the entire image, it's not gonna discriminate. All right, just checking some questions there. All right, um, I'm sorry if, if people who have um, some audio trouble or things like that, it's, it's nothing I can fix, it's specific to yours. I apologize, it's always hard not being able to, to help. Um, but I will go back and answer those questions that are related to, to, the, um, to the special or to the topics uh, on here, Lightroom. Okay, so global over the entire thing. And then the presets that we use. So if I, um, if I do something like um, Boca Chick, it applies it to the entire image across it. It's not going to discriminate and do just a specific area. So presets generally are going to be global. There are some that are kind of fairly localized, and I'll explain that later. But for the most part, they're global. And so if we want specific changes, then we want to use the local adjustments. And this is our local adjustment toolbar up here. We have the crop tool. We have the spot um, removal, which is cloning or healing. Then we have red eye removal. And we have the graduated filter. The radial filter, if you have Lightroom 5, 6, or CC, you have the radial filter. And then we have the adjustment brush. Now, I'm going to start with brushes, then go to filters. Okay? Now, this image here is lovely. They're really, I mean, it's gorgeous straight out of the camera. It really is. But let's just say we want to fine tune a few things. Okay? Just make it look that much more special. So I'm going to click on the brush. All right? I will be using brushes from the Perfect Portrait Brush collection tonight. And if you don't have it, I advise you getting it. I promise I use it every time I open up Lightroom if I'm editing. Now, but sometimes when I'm in Lightroom, I'm really um, managing my photos. I'm working on collections and tagging and things like that. But if I'm editing, I'm using the brushes. I promise. Okay? I promise. So I'm just going to tweak a few things. This one is going to be a very quick edit because there's not much we need to do. I'm zooming in and out with command 
minus or command plus. That's command on a Mac. If you're on a PC, you're going to use control, the control key. So control plus zooms in, control minus zooms out. So I'm going to zoom in. Now, if you zoom in and you get to an area that's like your the area you want to work on is, is out of frame, hold down your space bar and then click and drag. Okay, so then you can move around. So if I wanted to work, so it zoomed in on her eyes, but I want to work on her teeth, then I click and um, hold down my space bar, click my mouse, and, and move it, and then let go. All right, so let's say we want to work on, actually, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I just want to brighten a part of her face, just a little bit. So I'm going to go and use... Um, well, first, let me say, these are the sliders or um, brushes that uh, Lightroom gives you. So if I click on the exposure brush, then what it does is it lands, it tells us exposure, and, it, and it's using the last um, value that was used for the exposure. And if we move to the left, I mean to the right, it brightens, and if we move to the left, it darkens. Okay, so if I want to dark, uh, brighten a, a little bit, then I move it up. Now, down here, okay, we have si A, B, and erase. We have size, feather, flow, auto mask, and density. All right, so what the size means is that size of that circle. Your brush is going to be a circle, and you can Come over here and make it bigger or make it smaller. But I don't ever, I've never, ever, ever changed the size of my brush um, this way other than as an example in a webinar. But um, rather I use the scroll wheel on my mouse. So I just click, my, put my finger down and drag back. If you have a scroll wheel in the middle of your mouse, even if you have the magic mouse by Apple and it, it doesn't look like it has a scroll wheel, if you just touch the middle and pull back towards you, it makes it smaller. Then if you touch down and push away, it makes it bigger. That's the same for like a Logitech mouse that has a scroll in the middle. So that, I love that that does that. I wish it would work in Photoshop, but instead in Photoshop, if you do that, it zooms in and out of your picture. So this um, allows me to do my brush. If you don't have a mouse with a scroll wheel, if you're just editing like with a keyboard and a, um, and a trackpad, like on a laptop, then the bracket keys, so if you look at the letter P on your keyboard and move to the right, the right bracket key makes it bigger and the left bracket key makes it smaller. So that's the size. A and B doesn't matter. It's just, I mean, a brush is a brush, but what we how these differ is that it's going to remember your last settings, and I'll explain later how you might use that. The feather, see how we have two circles? Okay, we've got an inner and an outer, and that feather, it when it's at a hundred, then it's blending from the time the change reaches that inner circle, the outside of that inner circle, starts blending, 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 and fades off by the time it hits that outer circle. Okay, and that is great for when you're making fairly large edits that you want to blend in. So if we're brightening, we want it to blend in and not have it really have a defined start or stop. And I will um, use an example here. So let's, um, oops, um, I'll just make it really bright so you can see it. Okay, so here is the feather. It's going to be over bright, okay? So here it's blending in. We really can't see it. I'll tone it down a little bit. We really can't see where it starts and stops, can we? Because it's really blending a lot. Now. I delete that, and now I pull my feather down to where we have no inner and outer. They're really together, and I do it. You can see exactly where the change is, can't you? So as we move up, I'll delete that. As we move our feather up, we're going to start getting that inner and outer circle. All right, it's probably not enough blending. So I'm moving on up. There we go. So we can see there's a big difference. We just can't tell exactly where it starts and stops. So I'm going to pull it down and make it a more reasonable change here. 
and probably still too much, just a little bit less than that. Okay. All right. We can do this other side too. I want to brighten her whole everything up here. Okay. So we have that's what the feather is. The feather just um, blends in to the pixels around it. Now, the flow is how much um, we're seeing of that particular change. So if I, I'm going to click new and do a different one, and let's say I want to darken her hair a little bit. So now I'm just going to bring the exposure down. And there's other things we can do, but we're going to keep it really simple at first. And then we're going to start using the custom brushes. Uh, I just wanted to keep it simple while I explained feather and flow and density. So you saw how much it brightened, right? Um, the f now we're darkening. So let's see the flow at 100%. So if I darken, okay. See that? So it's darkening her hair. I'll make it even more pronounced. Okay. So we really see that it's darkening that hair. If I reduce the flow down, it's like putting a little restrictor valve on it. And we're only going to let about 50% out now instead of 100%. So you see it's darkening, but not quite to the effect up here, is it? And so on. Even less. We'll have even less change. So this was very dramatic, less dramatic, and almost it's very hard to see if there's any change, isn't it? Now flow is cumulative. If I keep on brushing, it's going to eventually get, if I click, click, if I keep on coming down, it's going to eventually get to this strength. Okay? That is flow. It's cumulative. Now, with density, is it restricts it all together. So we might say, okay, we only want 18% to come out, period. And that's all that will ever come out. So this is that same real dark. Now it's at 100% flow, but no matter what I do, it's only going to let 18% out. Or I might change it to, you know, 60%. Notice that it's not, it doesn't go back. It's not retroactive. It's always moving forward. So any changes you make down here, those are moving forward. Now change up here will go backwards. I might say, okay, so I'm going to move the density up a good bit. So here it's, you know, it's darker. Still not 100%, but it is darker, right? Now, I said this doesn't go, the changes you make here don't go back to previous times. But if I come up here, it does. So if I really wanted to make it dark, wow, it really yeah, it's retroactive. It's going back and changing. Wherever I brushed with this particular brush, it's going to make that change. All right? Okay, so that is what, so density is a permanent restrictor valve. This flow is temporary, uh, not temporary, but it's, um, but it, you can add more to it. You can keep on going. It's cumulative. It'll add up and add up and up until you get to 100% if you keep brushing over it. That's the difference between flow and density. Now, every so often we get a ticket into the help desk saying, my brush is just quit working. And we used to get it so often, we, we, we started writing blog posts about it. Like, okay, if your brushes stop working, check your flow and density. So just last week, I was helping somebody, and their brushes stopped working. I was like, check your flow and density. And sure enough, that was it. So there, if your flow is way down or your density is way down, even if you have a dramatic, you know, um, well, and actually, all the portrait brushes, there are very subtle changes usually, right? Because we want subtle changes. We don't big drastic changes. Um, but they're fairly subtle. So if we have one that I'm going to make it fairly prominent, and if it's way down low, then we're really not going to see much change. See, it looks like I'm not even doing anything, does it? doesn't look like it, nothing's happening. Well, it's because the flow and density are down. And don't ask me how they get changed. People are like, why do you change them? Well, somehow you clicked or your child clicked, and it just happens. Okay? So I'm going to reset. reset this image. Okay. So now, what is Automask? Automask is looking for edges, defined edges, and it's going to try and stay within that wherever you start and stay within uh, with like or similar pixels. Okay, so if I start in this dark area um, and start brushing, then Lightroom's going to assume that I'm looking for very similar pixels and it's not going to have that effect get applied to a light area. So let's do that darkening again, and I'm going to choose Automask. And now I'm going to brush. 
Now, it's, it's not always perfect. I'm going to turn it on. It's not always perfect. So here it's doing, here it ran off onto her shoulder, but it did not run off to her face, did it? So it's, I, I don't often use auto mask. Okay, so even though I brushed, well, now it went right over her face, it did it. But it, here, see the feather is not even going on her face. Okay, but oh, but it got her eyebrow. Do you see? Okay, so it's looking for similar, similar color or similar contrast, um, and that's what it's going to apply it to. But now it's not perfect because here it applied it to her neck and part of her shoulder, so it's not perfect. I don't often use auto mask, but I just wanted to show it in case people were curious. Um, also, the mask we're talking about here is not like a mask in Photoshop. The mask here is only showing us where we're brushing. That's it. I can turn this mask off and we can see. So it darkened her shoulder right here and darkened this, but it didn't hit her face. But the mask only shows us where we've been. Okay. <clears throat> now, we can also erase. So let's say I start brushing down here and I do hit her shoulder and I didn't mean to. I don't want to darken this area of her shoulder. I can click on the erase brush and come in and erase. Woo, you can see there's a change, can't you? So we can erase all that. So that's only her hair that's getting hit. And you can erase a little bit. All right, so I might say, okay, let's bring the flow down. So really only some of it's going to come off, not all of it. All right, so that was reducing the flow. If I turn it back to 100, now we see it all come off. All right, so let's reset. Make sure I was recording. Okay. All right, so that's the basics of brushes. And, but we're going to start using them here. Oh, and everywhere you start a brush, you, it's a little pin gets put down. So I'm on page two of the notes. If you're coming later in, there was the handouts I added. And they're at the bottom of that little pop-out screen. So if you have a little arrow, click the arrow out, and then the handouts be at the bottom. Um, if you can't find them, I, I'm sorry. Then we can, you know, maybe Laura can send it out as an email later tonight. Okay. So I'm going to click the brush and click where, you know, and when people install brushes, they have a lot of trouble finding them. So first, you know, the first step is to click the brush icon. And yours might look like, a, to me, it looks like a microphone here. Or look, uh, for others, it might look like a paintbrush. And depends on your program, your Lightroom version. And this all, is, it's a little like a makeup brush, really, is what it is. But the way they have it, just, you know, my poor eyesight looks like a little microphone. And then you click on whatever word is to the left of the word effect and over the word temperature. Now, I have learned that some people have been confused by this because they're not seeing all of this. And when you open up the brush tool, if you see this, that is why some people are, you know, confused. I tell them, oh, whatever word is right above the, the temp slider. I'm like, but I don't see the temp slider. Well, I, I had to do a screen share with somebody to figure out what they had done. And I, it didn't dawn on me that um, they just didn't realize that this little uh, triangle it collapses or opens back up. So once we collapse it, we're only seeing in the mount slider. If you open it up, then we see the temp slider. So if yours looks like this, click the little arrow and you're going to have the whole world opened up to you here. Okay, so click whatever is to the um, whatever word is to the right of the effect because it's going to change. It won't be exposure for you. It might be clarity. It might be something else. It's so whatever you use last, and then uh, it's just above the temp slider when it's opened up, not collapsed. Click on that, and then when you any custom brushes that you've installed into the local adjustment presets as individual folders, not I mean individual files, not the folder. I'll try and show how to install at the end. Um, but they will be installed down here. Okay, so I am just going to quickly start editing. So I'm going to do add light. And I know this is fairly strong, so I'm going to reduce the flow and back up. And I'm just going to kind of brighten her face just a little bit. And then you've got to click new between each one. 
When I want to start a new area or a new, you start using a new brush, I click new. Now if I come in, I see the little pin. See it? I have my pin set to auto. And if you come down here, when your brush tool is active, you're going to have a little toolbar down here. And it's not much there, but important things. One is show selected mask overlay, and the other is show edit pins. And if you have it on always, then you will always see the pin. Even if you're over here, some you know, mousing around, then your pin still shows. I prefer to have it auto, but just, you know, whatever works for you. And how auto works is that it's the pin shows when I'm in this area, but once I come over here and I'm doing something else, it disappears. And I like that because sometimes I want to see the image as it is without all the brush pins, without having to close my brush tool. That's, that's the perk of auto is that I can see it without the brush pins, without having to click done. All right. If you're not seeing this toolbar down here, just click T on your keyboard, T. So I'm going to have it go away. All right, so there, my toolbar is missing. I'm going to hit T, and there it comes back. The mask just shows us where we've brushed, okay? Now, a, a cool shortcut is just to hit O, O on your keyboard. I don't think that's in the notes, so you may want to write that down, but O will turn it off and on, the overlay mask off and on. Okay, so I've clicked New. Um, and so now what I want to do is maybe I want to brighten her eyes up a little bit, whiten the eyes just a tad. And so I'm going to go to the eye section and let's do eye whiten. Now, eye whitening is the only time I will reduce the feather because I don't want to desaturate and brighten any other area except for the whites of the eyes. And I will use the mask. I'll go, some, some changes I will use the mask and some changes I won't use the mask. Okay, so I'm just gonna brush, brush. And you know, you, you can be very specific or you can be pretty non-specific. It really is up to you. I try, I try to have a little detail, but then if I don't hit everything, I am a-okay with that, okay? It's, it's all right. If you get an area you didn't mean to, then you can just come in and erase. So I didn't mean to get that area right there. Okay. Now I'm going to click New. And there are some um, pretty cool things. So if you want to make the eyes even bluer or browner or greener, there's eye color blue, which I'm going to use. All right. Now, again, remember to, ch to check your feather and flow and things like that. And if I want to see the change as I brush it on, I turn my mask off. So I just hit O. Okay. Now I'm going to click New. And I'm going to do the catch lights. There we go. My flow up. new. We want to sharpen them a little bit. Be careful with the eyes. You don't want to make them look so incredibly, un, you know, beautiful that they look like they're <laughs> not of this world because that, that can happen. Okay. The other thing is with brushes, you can turn them off down here. You can reset. Be careful about that. And then close the whole thing or hit done. Close and done will be the, do the same thing. Down here there's a little rectangle with a white and a black. This is saying, okay, the brushes are all active. If I click the bottom, the black, then it deactivates all of them. So this shows us before any of the brushes, after the brushes. Before and after. Now, if you feel like, oh, I, you know, it's beautiful, but I went too far, then what you do is you come at mouse in and you just click. So if I say, okay, which one was this? Okay, this is the catch lights. 
all right, maybe I overdid the catch lights a little bit. So what you can do is just turn it on its side. We can collapse it and reduce how much of that is showing. Okay, so that's going to lower that amount down. Or if we sharp over sharpened them or if we whiten the eyes too much, then you can click on those particular pins. Okay, so here I can click on the whitening and then pull it down a little bit and say, oh, that's a little too much. Subtle changes are best. Okay, subtle changes are best. Now, I like to I like to zoom out so I can see the overall change. I'm going to zoom back in. Now, um, I'm going to just tweak her under eye circles just a little bit. I click new and then under eye circles. Okay. They're not they're really not bad. I'm just going to there's like this darkening area here. All right, new. Now I want to darken her lips up a little bit. This is smooth and warm. We'll see how that works for it. I may want to just darken it. And then I'm going to uh, pull the exposure down just a little bit. There we go. New, and now maybe you just want to skin smooth. So I'm just clicking and choosing the particular change I want to make. With this, I'm going to turn my mask on. Again, the mask just shows us where we're going, where we've been, or where we've been, so we know where we're going. My laptop sounds like it's fixing to take off. I'm working the, I'm working the CPU pretty good. Okay. Now, if you feel like it over smoothed, then you just come in and you can you can reduce the overall amount, but the clarity. So if you want a little more smoothing, then you can increase it. If you feel like you've got too much smoothing, you can decrease it. And there is a, there's like, I don't know, was it 30, 40 brushes in the portrait um, thing? Or maybe not that many. Uh, there's a lot. And so you can go through and find different, different things to use um, them for. It's fantastic. All right. So... The other thing, I want to, oh, I'm going to, no, I want to mess with her. All right. I want to add clarity. Clarity to this. Although they're already kind of blurry. When you add clarity, if it's blurred out, you're not going to be able to bring that back into focus. Just want to let you know. Okay. New, let's do, um, add color. Maybe it's a little bolder. Okay. There we go. So there's our before and after. Oops, a little too close. I'm going to zoom out. Sometimes the zooming is fickle. There we go. Now, the nice thing about brushes is that those stay, and you can then run presets, and they're not going to undo your brushes ever. They're not going to undo your brushes. Oh, I'm sorry. My son was calling in. He must have forgot I had this tonight. All right. Make sure I'm good. Okay. Following the notes here. Okay. Oh, the shortcut for O for overlay was um, was on there. Okay. 
Now, we're going to go through the brushes again on another one, but I want to show the radial and the graduated filters first. I'm quickly going to before and after uh, views by hitting Y on my keyboard. So if I just hit Y, so there's before. I mean, there's after. Sorry, there's the after. And if I hit Y, it goes to the before and after that I've chosen. Now, if you've chosen something down here like a left-right split, which would be this. Okay, so we split it like that. Let's get a little bigger. Oh. See, my zoom is so finicky. Here we go. We can move it over. Um, or if you want top and bottom, that kind of thing. It's going to remember what you have last chosen. But the nice about the Y trick is that you can use it while you're editing in a panel, which like if, um, or um, editing while you're in a brush. So I use, I lose my before and after down here, but I can still do it with the keyboard shortcut. Okay. Now, um, oh, okay. So the graduated filter, how that works is that it's like a little crosshair and it's gonna start at the edge of your photo, whether it's the left edge, the right edge, the top edge, the bottom edge. And then it's going to apply the change that you've selected. And it's going to start the strongest at the edge, and it's going to taper off. It's going to graduate the change. Strongest at the edge and taper off. So let's just do something simple like um, exposure. So let's darken a little bit. So maybe I want to darken this side. So I'm going to come here, start, and see how it – now if I turn the mask on – the mask is only available, I believe, in Lightroom 6 and CC. Maybe just Lightroom CC, so I apologize if I'm showing you something you can't do, because it is pretty cool, okay? I love seeing the mask on the graduated filter. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so we have the mask there, so we can see how it's strongest here, and it's tapering off, or we have very little pink here, don't we? Very little. Um, we can keep dragging out if we want to, and we see how it's strongest here. And then it tapers off. So you can move it. You can also rotate it so you get close and then come away. You can rotate it to be more like this or like that. You got to get near your pin though, okay? So we can come on. There we go. So maybe this is what I want. Okay. Now, the nice thing about the graduated filter, so let's, maybe I'll just pull it on out. Okay. The nice thing about the way they did the graduated filter in Lightroom 6 and CC is that they added in the ability to delete it or erase it off of a particular area. So if you have older versions of Lightroom, wherever your graduated filter lands, and if it, if it does something to uh, a part of the image that you don't want it to, then you, normally you'd have to take a brush and counteract it. So if it darkened an area we didn't want it to darken, then the only solution is to go in with a brush and brighten the area that got darkened that we didn't want to be darkened. Does that make sense? Well, in Lightroom 6 and CC, they gave us the ability to change our option, our radial, I mean our graduated filter option, to a brush now. And then we can click erase. So I'm going to turn my mask on. So now I can erase the brush effect. And it doesn't even have to, like, I'm going to back up. So there I erased all of it. But let's say I only want to erase some of it. Because I want some of it darkened. I just don't want it as dark as the rest of it is. So then I reduce the flow. Okay? So I reduce the flow. So now it's taking some off, but just not as much as it would if it was 100, okay? And then we can always see, so there's before, and there's after, and then, you know, it's too much. I was just trying to show it for a fact. I'm gonna reduce it down a little bit, so maybe that's what we want. Before, after. Now, if you have a, a, a side that's maybe too bright, you can darken that side. Come over here. Ooh, it's too dark. I'm just going to drop it down just a little bit. Oops, sorry. Just a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so that's graduated filter. The radial filter is very much like the graduated filter, except for everything is in an oval or a circle. Okay, and so let's say we're going to brighten at the center of the image. So I'm going to brighten it up. I'm going to do a bunch so we can see it. So I'm going to do it really strong. And I'm just going to click somewhere and drag. So let's just get started somewhere by clicking and dragging. And I'm going to move it. So here we see that it is doing the inside. Okay. If you happen to want to darken um, or lighten the outside of it, say we want to keep the inside dark and lighten the outside of it. Well, then we come over here and uncheck invert mask. So there it's going to brighten everything except for where we had our oval, right? I'm going to come back. I'm going to invert it. Okay. Now I'm going to do my mask. Now the feather, if we want to have it um, be very defined, then you're going to reduce that feather down, which you're seldom going to want it very defined. Um, but that, that, that feather is going to blend. The, the effect, it's going to start at the center and blend out, or if you're doing, in, you've inverted it, or you haven't inverted it, then it's going to start the outside and blend in, okay? And so we'll do that. All right, turn that mask off. Now, it's over bright. Uh, I was making an example, so we're going to tone it down. And I really, she really didn't need it. I'm just doing it for an example. We can always change the size of it and the location, Click and move it around. We can add in, you know, a little bit of contrast, maybe a little bit of clarity, that kind of thing. All right. I can do a new one. So if we wanted to add like a vignette, so I'll do a new one. We're still going to do exposure. We're going to drop it down and darken. So now I'm going to click and drag out, move it here. Okay. Now, remember this invert mask? I'm going to uncheck it. So now it's darkening everything except for the center. We turn the mask on. Now it's feathering. It's blending in too much. It's coming in too much into the inside of that circle. So we need to pull that feather back. So now we're going to have, um, it's, it's not going to venture so far into our area. Now I'll pull. Make it less. Okay. We're done. So that is that radial filter. You can also erase with the radial filter. And it does pin, uh, it has pins just like the brush does, and so does the uh, graduated filter. So I'm gonna click on the one that did the darkening. Okay, that's that one. And what was I gonna do? Oh, you can come in and erase. So I'm gonna hit brush and erase. Let's say I want to erase all of it. I don't want this to be darkened. This, there we go. Okay. Done. Okay. So there is our before and after. Just with brushes and radio filter and graduate filter. And so if we wanted to add a preset, we could do it, and it's not going to overwrite anything. And let's see, I think, um, there we go. So there's Boko Chick. If we wanted to add in, like, there's Aurora. That's pretty. Now, some, if a preset adds a lot of light and we lightened, then we might have to go in and take out some of the brightening that we did. Because it's, we know, it's overdone. We brightened plus the preset brightened. So that, that is one um, drawback of doing those brushes first, is that um, you may have to go back and, and tweak that. Uh, let's see. And there's Meadow. Look what it did to her eyes. It made them so beautiful. Now, I do want to say something really quick. So if, you, if you're using the portrait brushes and you change an image to black and white, what may happen, okay, is if you use something that had color, now it's not showing here, but if you did like the um, color cast or things like that, then you may end up seeing a little bit of color in your black and white. And what you'll have to do is go into that pen, that brush, open up your brush tool, go to that pen and delete it. 
So I had that I had that happen. Oops, I did something. All right. Um, Chauncey. Um, I'm going backwards with Control Z or Command Z, and that's how you can um, go back. Just go backwards. For summer dreaming, I'm using the ones out of um, the summer limited um, edition, 2015. Oh, I like that one. That's Vintage Kiss. Okay, so let's do another image here. And I think I was going to work on this one right here. Okay, so I did some some changes, some edits, and then I was playing with um oops. Come down. All right. There we go. So I'm gonna make a snapshot. And this is something I always show in every webinar I do. And people always like, what did you do? How do you do it? Why do you do it? So I'm gonna make a snapshot. I went back to the point in history where I'd finished up with the brushes. And I'm gonna do Command N or Control N. And it just allows me to capture this moment in time to go back to it easily. I could export right now. I could export Clean Edit. I mean, at this point in time and export it. Or I can do some more things too. So let's say I, I wanted to, you know, apply a preset or, um, you know, some other thing to it. So, like, if I added some little bokeh, and, um, if I added something like that, I could come back to the clean edit, to the snapshot, and start again, okay? Or I can save that other one. I can have multiple. I've had eight snapshots before. So I did this. This is um, just with brushes. And it's subtle, but your changes should be subtle, okay? Those are the best changes, are the subtle changes. So there's the before and after for this image. I think I have covered everything in the notes. Oh, snapshots. Oh, I was getting to that. I didn't realize there was in the notes. And I always go to snapshots. All right. So this is the before and after, and this was very simple, and, and it's subtle, but we're going to reset it and do it again. Now, when I reset it, my snapshot stayed the same, and I'm just going to use brushes first, and the first one I'm going to do is add light, and I always do add light at a lower flow, okay? I like a lower flow for this one. I'm back up. Okay, so, and it's probably too strong as it is and so come in oh. All right, I'm just going to lower that down a little bit okay now a lot of times when they have deep eye sockets or they're dark then I'm going to do it um, do a little brightening on their eye sockets so I'm just going to come in so now I've got I should have two pins and there we go so that is one pin that it's and if I hover over it it shows me where I brushed Notice I didn't brush over everything because if I did her forehead too much, then it's going to like glisten a little bit. So this one is inactive. It's done. It's closed up. This one is the one I'm currently working on. It has a white outer rim and a black center. And it says, okay, this one's currently active. So I can brush in other areas. So if I wanted to brighten her arms up a little bit, you know, I could do that. And if we did the mask, it's going to show me I did her eye sockets and I did her arms right there. Once I hit new, okay, so see it's white center, black, I mean a white outer, black center. Once I click new, let's see what happens to it. Now it's all gray. So it's, it's, it's there, but it's not active. It's not the one we're actively using right now. If I want to delete one, all I have to do is click on it and hit delete and it poofs it. Now, let me turn this off. Notice that her nose is, you know, um, shiny. So I brightened, and when I brightened, that probably made it even brighter. So I'm gonna come in, I activated this one, hit the erase, and I'm gonna erase it. Erase some over this, over her nose area. Just because I don't wanna make a problem 
worse, right? I don't want to make a problem worse. Get this area too. All right. Now I'm going to hit new, and I want to work on her eyes. And so I'm going to go to eyes. Her eyes could be blue. Her eyes could be green. Actually, what I'm going to do first really quick is I'm going to tweak the, I'm going to check the white balance. Okay. So I'm hit the, I'm, I'm going to the basic panel, kind of shifting gears real quick. Got my white, uh, my eyedropper there. I'm in the basic panel. And I'm just going to click on the whites of her eyes. That's too cool. All right. I think that's a little better. Yeah, I thought she was a little warm there, but now she might be a little cool. Let me see. Look at these numbers underneath the histogram. Okay, I think that's better. I like that better. It was too warm over here. All right, so that is one thing I'll do before I do brushes is I'll change the white balance, or I'll change the white balance with brushes. Okay, you can do that too. All right. She's a little cool there, so I'm going to move this, tweak it a little bit. There we go. I think that's better. All right. So um, her eyes, I mean, gosh, they could be green. They could be blue. I think they're blue. So, but they also could be green. I bet they change with her, what she's wearing. I have a son that does that. So I want the eyes, and let's do eye blue. And check your flow and feather. And then I'm just going to brush on it. Just adds a little color. All right, new. And then I'm going to do sharpen. Now be careful you don't click on an existing pin because then what's going to happen is you're going to activate that pin and then you'll be using the change that that pin was, had made. All right, click new. If we want to brighten up her catch light, just kind of make the eye stand out a little bit. I can do that, but I'm going to reduce the flow. And just grab them. New. I'm going to whiten, just barely whiten her eyes. Just barely whiten her eyes. The whites of her eyes. Just barely. If you whiten the eyes too much, they can look like demon eyes. So you got to be careful. Be careful with those. Now I'm going to, I'm using the Perfect Portrait Brushes. And they're just a great one to use for portrait editing. Um, uh, honestly, any type of editing, um, landscape, flowers, babies, um, but it's it's very good. All right, there is a baby set too that's more specific to baby issues. So I'm gonna brighten under eye circles just a little bit. I'm gonna come back up. And do a little bit of eyeliner. Make your brush really small for this. You can actually put on makeup on sometimes on people if you want to. We wanted to make her um, eyebrows a little darker. We can reduce the flow, darken her eyebrows. Okay. Now, hit new, and I can smooth her skin. I'm gonna show you a quick, lazy way to do the skin smoothing. All right, quick, lazy way. So, I'm turn the mask on, and I just brush over everything. Lazy. I'm not bothering with her chest and, and neck because it's very blurry already. So I got everything, didn't I? And then I just hit the erase, hit the erase um, brush, and then I come in and erase what I don't want to get smoothed. Be careful, you don't want to click on a, 
uh, pin because then it'll activate to that one. Okay, so let's see. It's before and after. Now, if you want to, um, if you want, if you go like, oh man, I, I liked it better when it's warmer. We can always tweak that. We can always tweak that. If I come back to that basic panel, I can warm her up with a brush. Okay. Click your brush tool and go to temp and then just pull it over to the yellow a little bit. And then we'll just warm her up with a brush. Just a little, oh, it's a little too much. Okay. Just a little bit. There we go. All right. Before and after. If we did the radial filter, um, we could do that right here. And I'm just going to do, do the add light. So the brushes will show up in the radio filter list and the graduated filter list. So you can use a brush as a filter. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to click and drag out. And I just want her. I can drag it down. But I don't want it so much. And this is just, um, maybe I want a little, okay, that's good. And then maybe I want to do a vignette where I add darkness. Okay, that's where we're going to reverse it. This is where people get kind of confused. So here I want to darken everything outside of her. So I'm going to invert it. Look at our mask here. Pull it back some. And then Click on the brush. So when you have a radial filter or the graduated filter, we have new edit and brush. You can go to the brush, click erase. I might say, okay, I don't want to darken her arms. So I'm going to erase the arms area here. Maybe some of this. Okay. All right. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so let me. Um, what's that kind of? This one right here. Okay. I'm going to reset it. Now, sometimes the person is not close enough, like they're farther away. You don't need to do a whole lot of detail work, okay? Um, but we do want to zoom in. All right, and see what we can do. So what I can do here is brighten her up a little bit, right? And, well, first thing, the white balance is off. But we're going to leave that alone for right now. And um, I'm just going to brighten her up a little bit. Okay. Brighten her up a little, little bit. Now I'm going to click New. And I might just add a little bit of clarity off in her eye area. So this kind of just stands out a little bit more. Remember, when we have a distance shot, you don't need to get too nitpicky about the specifics because they're just, you're not going to see them. You're not going to see those fine details. You might still um, you know, do a little bit of skin smoothing if you feel like you want to do that, but you don't have to get so particular because they're just not going to see it. If, you're, if we print it like this, She's not going to be, her face is not going to be super detailed. Now, I do want to go back in. 
That's the clarity. I want the light. And I need to kind of brighten up her arm. There we go. Okay. Now what's nice about this one is that we could do things with the radial filter or the graduated filter um, with these. And or the summer limited edition, that's got some cool bokeh. The bokeh, all right, is the radial filter. So I wanted to show you how to use these. And let's just say I do um, fairy dust, okay? So I did fairy dust. And I really like fairy dust for this particular picture, but there's some that I don't want on there. I love because it already had some bokeh in the background, some points of light. And, but if we use some of the bokeh presets that Pretty Preset sells, sometimes they're in areas that we don't want. And all you have to do is activate the radial tool, radial filter tool, mouse into your image, and the pins will show up. If you're not seeing the pins, then you need to click to always or to auto. But again, I have the auto, and it works. Then what you do is you just click on the ones you don't want and delete them, or you can move them to somewhere else. But I'm just going to come in and delete the ones that are kind of near her or on her that I don't want. Maybe I don't want these. Okay. So I mouse out so then I can see what it looks like. Um, maybe this one. Maybe one more. Okay. So there we go. That's how you use those bokeh. You can just move them. You can delete them. And it adds a, just a lovely effect to your image. Now, what if we want a little more light um, to this image? We can use the graduated filter. But I, don't, I want to kind of have it come gradually like it's sunlight on her. And I know the sun's back here, but we're going to add light differently. Um, there are some graduated filter um, presets that are sold in the shop. So we have like um, sunlight and it adds warm light. So I can click and drag in. So here we can add in some sunlight like that. There's also um, blue skies, uh, green grass. Now it's going to require grass to be green. It's to some version of green. Um, we can add, let's, let's do this, add some um, depth and drama. Sorry, depth and drama which this is kind of hazy, so we'll see how this, it doesn't do too bad. The image was kind of hazy. All right. We can dehaze, uh, darken the flash area that's gotten real bright, um, a colorful background, like, uh, like I said, blue skies, but you're gonna have to, it cannot make blown out skies blue, but if you already have a, a, a light blue or a regular blue sky, then it's gonna make it even more vivid, all right? Now, what's nice too is that once we've done these things, if we do change the white balance, if we decide to do that, then it, those changes are still gonna look really nice here. This one is tricky because we'd have to zoom really far in to get the whites of her eyes to change the white balance. But we can try some of these areas of her vest. Okay, so look at the big change there. And it's a little too green for me, a little too green. But I want to show you, sometimes you're not often get it, get it, going to get it perfect. You're going to get close to it. Here, we got close to it, but it's a little bit too much. So I'm going to, um, uh, actually, when I backed up, it's not very green. It's not bad. I'm going to just tweak it just a little bit. And then I warm it just a tad. But I like that. Okay. And... Maybe I do want to add a radial filter to brighten her up a little bit. I'm going to add light. Just a little bit. Make sure we can't see it too much. I'm lessening the 
um, the darkness of the depth and drama. Okay. All righty. Here we go. Now, if we use presets now, the brushwork um, and the radio filters will stay there. But what will change is that white balance change we made. That is going to change because it's going to go off the inherent, or it's going to change if they if if the preset has a recorded color temperature or things like that. It's going to apply it and it's going to overwrite the change we made on the um, in the basic panel. So if I do something like um, soft matte summer here, is it that? So here's vintage kiss. Oh, I like that. All right, that's vintage kiss. Um, here we've got Aurora sky. So it's going to change that white bounce and it, it may overwrite what we change. So we're getting that magenta white balance that was inherently already in there. Spoke a chick. Color rich. And that one's going back to that original white balance. I can see the tone in it. This one is altering it a good bit. That's meadow. These are beautiful. Okay. So, I am ready for questions with the brushes. I hope that I didn't go over snapshots too much. So I don't have time. All right. The thing to know, too, about brushes and graduated filters is that you can sync them, but that doesn't mean you should. What does syncing mean? Syncing means if we have, let's say, we've got this girl here and, and this one, and we want to sync the changes, maybe sync the white balance. But the brushwork was very specific to her in this area, or the, grad, or the radio filter was very, very specific. So if we went and we decided to sync these two images, we should uncheck the brush and graduated filters, or just the local adjustments, uncheck that. If, you have, if they started out with similar white balances and similar exposure, then the changes you make will be great, and they'll apply to both. But you don't want to sync brushes. Um, sometimes you can sync graduated filters or even radial filters because you think that they're in the same position or same, you know, let's say that, that, you know, you took five pictures and she's roughly in the same spot and we did a radial filter to brighten up her or, or add a vignette or whatever. And then you sync that across multiple. Then you go and look at those other images. And you might notice that really the brightening area is over here instead of over here because really you moved or she moved or, or what have you. So be careful about syncing brushes and um, graduate filter. I generally do not do it. I'm just like I don't uh, sync spot removals. 